What's up guys? I'm Stephanie Anderson from Sequence One Music School and I'm excited to show you the new features that are available on the Ableton Push 2 after you upgrade to Live 10. I'll create a quick loop on the push to show you the improvements. I've got a drum kit called Vintage Madlib already loaded on a MIDI track. This kit is available on Ableton's new pack called Chop and Swing, which has some really dope sounds. I'm going to start by recording a quick two bar beat. But before I do that, I'm going to switch to clip mode, so we'll be ready to check out the first new feature. And look at that. With Live 10, the Push 2 now shows you the MIDI notes of the selected clip, and it even populates the notes as you record them. The velocity of each note is indicated by the note's opacity, and there's even a highlight that lets you know which pad is currently selected. This is an awesome visual reference, and it makes the process of editing clips a lot easier. There's one other new feature here I want to mention. You'll notice that it's now possible to crop clips from the Push 2, which is also a really handy editing improvement. The next thing I want to show you is how to use the loop selector to duplicate the contents of a sequencer page. Let's create a little variation in this clip so we can copy it. First, I'll quantize the notes, then double the loop twice to get an eight bar clip. Now I'll select bar four and program a couple of extra percussion hits. I'll play that really quick. Okay, let's say that I want to duplicate this variation on bar four over to bar eight. With Live 10, we can do this using the loop selector. All you do is hold down the duplicate button, select what you want to copy, and then specify the destination. But here's what you need to remember. You're actually duplicating the entire sequencer page, which might not correspond to one bar of music. It depends on your grid resolution. Right now, the grid is set to 16th notes, so we're looking at two bars. If I only want to duplicate bar four, I need to switch to 32nd notes. So now I can copy bar four to bar eight. I'll hold down duplicate, press bar four, then bar eight. And now you can see on the push to display that bar four was copied to bar eight. So I'll just go back to my full eight bar clip. And by the way, you can also delete the contents of a sequencer page in Live 10. You just hold down the delete button and then you select what you wanna delete. All right, let's switch gears and use the push to add one of the new devices in Live 10. I'm gonna fatten up these drums with an audio effect called Drum Bus, which is an analog style drum processor. I'll turn up the input drive to add a little distortion, and I'll take the dry wet percentage down so some of the dry signal comes through. Now let's listen to the before and after. pretty big difference. If you want to learn more about working with the new devices in Live 10, be sure to check out our advanced music production course. Next, I want to show you how to use the push to access an item in one of your collections. Collections are new in Live 10, and they're a really useful tool for organizing your library. You can create up to seven collections and then tag your favorite sounds and devices for quick access. I've already assigned a new audio effect rack called Build and Break to my effects collection, so let's go ahead and load it. Let's play with some of the macros to see what kinds of effects we can apply to the drums. Okay, let's go ahead and add some hi-hats to our loop. I'm going to use the closed hat in the Kit Core 808 preset.
I want to sequence two bars with 16th note hi-hats, so I'll create a clip and change the grid. And I'll turn accent off and switch over to clip mode. I want the velocities of these notes to vary a little bit, and with Live 10, I can now quickly toggle to the 16 velocities layout. So I'll hold down the layout button, then I'll select the highest value, and I'll program notes here and here. Now I'll choose a lower velocity and add those notes. Now when I release the layout button, I toggle back to the 16 pad layout. Let's give that a listen. And just so you know, that toggle for the 16 velocities layout also works in simpler slicing mode. Okay, let's add a top bass to our drum loop so that we can check out some of the other new features. I'm going to use an operator preset in my instruments collection. I'll load that. Before we start, I'm going to set the scale to E Phrygian. And I'm also going to switch to a brand new layout in Live 10, the 32 pad melodic step sequencer. I'll press layout twice to access the new layout. The 32 pad melodic step sequencer is awesome because you have a step sequencer in the top half of the grid, just like in the drum rack. On the bottom, you have access to the notes, so you can select which ones you want to program. I'm going to record a two bar clip and then we'll take a look at the sequencer. To create a two bar clip, I'll hold down the layout button to toggle briefly to the loop selector, which is a new feature in Live 10. And that loop selector toggle also works in the other melodic layouts as well. Okay, I'm going to switch to clip mode and then record this bass line. And I'll also turn accent back on so these notes are recorded at full velocity. So in the sequencer, you can see the notes that I played and I can edit this performance if I want. For example, I can select a note in the bottom 32 pads and then program it up here. I'll just remove those. You also have access to the same MIDI note editing options that you do in the other sequencer layouts. If I hold down this note, I can change its position, length, and velocity. I'll make this note two steps instead of one. Let's listen to that. Let's add a little more interest to our bass line. The pitch bend on this synth preset sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to record some pitch bend automation. I'll solo the track so you can hear it better. Okay, so that's the 32 pad melodic step sequencer. Let's move on to some other new features. First, I'll switch to device mode and then select oscillator C in operator. And if I go to the oscillator envelopes, you can see the fancy new visualization for envelope banks on the push two. While we're here, I'm gonna record some automation for the attack parameter so you can see the envelope change shape as I move the knob. All right, let's check out the next two features, which are in the EQ8 device. I'll load that. Just like Operator, EQ8 was treated to a pretty significant graphical improvement. Now you can see the spectrum visualization on the Push 2 display. Okay, I'm going to cut the lows around 70 Hz. But first, check this out. With Live 10, the minimum frequency was extended from 30 Hz to 10. Pretty cool. Okay, I'll just move the filter up to remove some of the lows. 
And I should also point out that the push to display shows a visualization of the filter bands after you set them. Okay, let's move on. Next, I'm going to sidechain the bass to the kick so you can see the improvements to the compressor device on the push 2. First, I'll select the sidechain tab and turn sidechain on. And here's our first big improvement. It's now possible to configure the sidechain routing directly from the push 2. I'm going to select the kick from the drum rack as the sidechain input, and I'll watch the meters to know which one is the kick. Okay, now that side chaining is configured, let's dial in the compression settings. I'll set the ratio to about 8 to 1. Now I'll play the clip and start bringing down the threshold. As soon as I start playback, you'll notice the other compressor enhancement. A graphical representation of the compressor's activity view is now visible on the push 2, which is super useful. Okay, let's set our compression options. Next, I'm going to add some sub bass underneath our top bass, so I'll create a new track and load an 808 preset. All right, load that. And just a heads up that you probably won't be able to hear these notes without a pair of headphones. Before I record the bass line, I just want to point out one more new feature on the push. It's now possible to record arm a track with one hand by pressing and holding a track button. Okay, let's create this new clip. Okay, I'll just quantize that really quick. And now we've got a loop with drums and bass. To show you the last two new features, I'm going to close this project and open a new one. The first thing I'm going to show you is the improvement to the convert button. So I'll select an audio track and load in some audio material. So now if I press convert, you'll see the three convert options that were added to the push with Live 10. So I'll go ahead and select Convert Melody, and now if I go to Clip Mode, you can see the converted melody. So the last thing I want to show you guys is a really awesome new instrument in Live 10 called Wavetable. I'm going to load in a custom preset from our advanced music production course, which you should definitely check out. So I'll go to my collections and load it on the track. The really cool thing about using the wavetable on the push 2 is that you can see a visualization of the wavetable on the display. Now I'm going to press select and then the touch strip to set it to mod wheel. Check that out. On the display, you can see the wavetable position moving as I adjust the mod wheel. And that's it. Now you know a little bit more about the new features that are available with Live 10 and the Push 2. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about using the Ableton Push 2 with Live 10, then check out our new course at sequence1.org.